The Seahorse Effect by Sierra Steinbrecher. Chapter 15. Dizzy Spots and New Assignments. Plasma cannons boomed in the distance as Anakin finished healing a nasty shoulder wound. Once he came back to full awareness, he looked for Zen. He learned the man's first name about a week or so after he'd told the Jedi about his son. Crouching, Zen waved to him from the side of another downed soldier. The two had figured out quickly that if the other man looked for survivors while Anakin worked on healing, they could save a lot more soldiers. Anakin sat next to the man and reached out through the force while Solo swept the area for threats. This man, it seemed, had merely been knocked unconscious. The Jedi jolted his system into awareness with a small force push on his consciousness, explained to the man where to go to get help, and looked for Zen and the next wounded. This one had a chest wound that had just grazed the man's heart muscle. Slowly, Anakin eased the internal bleeding and guided the blood cells back into the arteries and veins, then sealed the ripped tissue back into place. He nudged him awake more gently than he had with the previous man and yelled to Zen, Get base to send a stretcher out here. Zen nodded and flipped on his comm as the Jedi moved on again. Solo scanned the horizon and didn't see any of the enemy, so he glanced back at Anakin doing the healing. Except he wasn't healing. The Jedi was hunched over one hand on the ground as if to steady himself and the other clutching his head. Zen raced over. What's wrong? Nothing. Anakin answered quickly. I'm fine. Any towards around? Not a single metalhead. You sure you don't need to get back to base? I told you I'm fine. Just tired. But Solo didn't look convinced. There are still wounded out here. We'll stay until they call us back. And again ordered lacing the sentence with a forced suggestion for extra emphasis. Reluctantly, Solo caved. Fine, but when we get back, you let a medic check you out. And again waved away the comment and dove into the healing trance before Solo could say more. He quickly healed the bad burn on the man's thigh and stimulated the blood cell production, but didn't immediately come back to awareness. Instead, he let his attention drift to himself. The twins were still safely ensconced within him, and he didn't see any agitation in the living force that showed a wound or sickness. So what was wrong with him? Was it something to do with the force? Sometimes, large shifts caused by catastrophes or massive loss of life could affect force-sensitive individuals. His nerves jangled, and something happened. He rose out of the trance and ran a hand through his tied back hair. He nearly pulled it out of its short horse tail and the slight pain jolted him back to reality. He firmly shoved all worry into the force. He could think about this later. Right now, he had work to do. So he looked up and saw Zen kneeling by another downed soldier. He walked over and started to heal again. Several hours later, Zen pulled an exhausted Anakin back to base and shoved it towards the field hospital. Go get yourself checked out. He ordered with all seriousness. The Jedi walked in the direction of the medical tent until he felt Zen's presence turn down an alley of barracks. Then he bolted away for the mess. Anything big enough to cause that kind of reaction from him was bound to be a good gossip topic, and food was the best way to get someone to start chitting. He hung around the mess for an hour or so, ears primed for major news instead of the average troop gossip. Even switching tables once or twice, he didn't hear anything major enough to have caused his dizzy spell. Disgruntled and scowling, he finished his food, left his plate with the rest of the dirty dishes, and headed to the bathroom for a little privacy. The room he shared with Zen would have been better, but his partner might question why he was back so soon when medics didn't like to release high-profile soldiers like Anakin without a full checkup. Those would take a long time. So, bathroom it was. Without glancing around, a sure way to make people suspicious of you, Anakin got into one of the stalls and locked the door. Quickly, he loosened his belt, pulled his shirt up and off, and ran his fleshed hand over his middle. A smile softened his face, and he closed his eyes. They were bigger now, so much so that he was beginning to worry that someone might notice. Life pulsed beneath his fingertips, and he wondered when he would feel them for the first time. But his dizziness couldn't be good for them. He ran a quick scan on himself with the force. Everything seemed fine, except... Wait, was his blood flow different? He looked more closely and noticed that many of the blood vessels interwoven with and around the space he'd made for the two were under more pressure than before. Then it hit him and he relaxed. Pregnancy could sometimes cause dizzy spells, especially during the second trimester when the body was adjusting to the growing room and put extra strain on the blood vessels in that area. Actually, I shouldn't have expected this, he thought, 
My body wasn't made to take extra pressure in that area, and there's twice as much since there's two of them growing. But even though it was natural, it was still dangerous. What if he had a dizzy spell while he was fighting? What if it happened again while Zen was around and the man made him go to the medics instead of just dropping him off? He could get found out. He was already worried that someone might notice his growing bump. He didn't need another thing to make people suspicious. Calm down, Anakin berated himself. He took a deep breath and released the almost panic into the force. Then he started turning the problem over in his mind. It was the pressure of the expanding pseudo-uterus that caused the dizzy spells. It probably doesn't help that I'm wearing a belt on top of it. He made a note to wear it more loosely, well, as loosely as he dared. And getting up and down quickly probably wasn't a good idea either, since that could make a normal person dizzy. He'd have to try not to do that while he was out in the field. He wouldn't be able to do more until he could do some research, which was next to impossible, on base with a lack of privacy and computer terminals, but as soon as he could, he would. Then a message came over the base-wide comm system and Anakin got up to leave. About an hour later, Anakin was packing his clothes when Zen walked in the room. Already tired of me? The man joked, and the comment made the Jedi's lips twitch at the corners. Shaking his head, he said, The Jedi Council contacted the General. They need me to team up with my old master for a while in a couple firefights. They've got a transport waiting for me. He zipped up his bag and threw it over his shoulder. Bye, Zen. May the Force be with you. His smile turned into a smirk. Even if you don't believe in it. You think? Zen replied before his face curled up and he yelled at the retreating Jedi, And I do believe in the Force!